for himself. Why did he kill himself? He didn't live with two English people. I don't know. Wait, he yeah, was messed up. He actually killed himself. Well, no, he genuinely killed himself. That's really uh, he, he took pills. He took pills. He took pills. Okay, suicide note today. I, myself, and my wife, in order to escape the disgrace of the dream system or capitalist system, chose to come to peace. Isn't he about, he's about to have some trouble with all I'm so cold. Please do something. I can't stand this empty feeling that I'm having. My head is horrible. Stop the pounding. That's so much. I have no control over anything in my life. I'm breaking into pieces. Somebody do something. That's how it's going to go. My brother will die in the bridge of the for the rest of my life. Breathe it forever. It doesn't go away. It becomes a part of you. Step by step. Breath by breath. I will never stop breathing baby. I will never stop loving him. That's just how it is. Breathe and love and be joined. Do you think? Step one. Is that what you're going to do? Wait. Give me some. That's just how it is. Breathe and love and be joined. You don't get one without the other. All I can do is love him and the world. And you didn't him by living with their dream spirit and good. This video makes me feel so sad and it also makes me realize that this is actually happens in the world. Like it's so scary to me that people actually get that depressed at all and kill themselves. Jacob had to leave because he was crying so hard. I mean, he certainly know much about like, what happened in the past. But he had lost like family members from this kind of thing. So like it does get quite emotional for him. That was so emotional. And I feel like that's one of his sibling brothers that actually committed suicide. That makes me feel so sad. Like, I'm actually reading your sick link to it. I'm like, actually don't even want to think about that. Like, that's so, that's so bad. I don't even want to think about it. That's making me feel so emotional. Like, I don't want to think about it. Like, I don't want to think about it.
as I know, you don't like this weather. her eyes as if reading and notices an optical illusion. From slanted lines of faded cursive emerges a hologram. Bold, clear script. The words stand upright and float before her nose. They read, My land name was Dawa. Unshackled, I am now nameless, drowning in the infinite sea. Dawa's story spirals in both directions from the center of the diary. The linguist reads cross-eyed down the barrel of her nose. 
she considers the diary an alphabetical tesseract, an anagram built in four dimensions. She uses strange modalities of space and time to disassemble the shape of the delirious text and reconstruct Dawa's truth. The linguist finds the hologram to reveal not only Dawa's words, but the whole of his interior. She becomes cold and hungry as she reads. A foreign mud splat language rips through her ears and out her mouth, and she knows this to be Dawa raving as he died. She's never heard this tongue and realizes this diary to be much older than the estimated 200 years. The linguist relinquishes all of her perceptions to Dawa, and frostbite ravages her extremities. The odor of a sick and violent animal paralyzes her. Fear drives her deeper into mesmer. A stereoscopic illusion occupies all of her. Dawa revisits us now in fragments through the mediated body of the linguist. 200 of us march in the service of six men. The leader is towering and thumb-shaped and speaks either in whispers or in shouts in an accent I cannot place. He wishes to reach the top of Kanchenjunga and stand taller than any man has ever stood. He brings with him a physician from Switzerland, a fair-haired Italian boy with whom he shares a tent, two identical French brothers, and a feeble Englishman who has lost fingers and one eye on mountains less fierce than this. The prospects of ascent are unlikely, but I am fascinated by the thumb man, and he turns to me often for advice. The Italian boy has fled back to town. He spoke of a great hairy beast, but his constitution was always weak. The boy was simply frightened, and I have now taken his place in the thumb-shaped man's tent. Each night we lay on our sides, and he whispers promises to the bridge of my nose. I stare at his lips cross-eyed and awake, ecstatic, but never rested. He always says the same thing. On the summit, we'll conquer space and time and flow freely. We have established our fourth camp above the Zimu Glacier. This is the furthest I have ever ventured up the mountain. The thumb-shaped man has revealed his cruelty and has little patience for my fellow porters, despite their obedience and barefootedness. He has asked too much of the mountain. Soon the demon of Kanchenjuga will demand an offering. I feel the thumb-shaped man suspects this too. He wants to push toward a summit. I urge him to take only a handful of men. Terrible, blizzarding conditions. One French brother falls deep into a crevasse and pulls the other down with him. The Englishman vanishes. I believe he'd rather hide with the porters than venture into madness with the thumb. Just us and the Swiss doctor. The thumb reveals his true wish. To evoke and defeat the demon of Kanchenjunga, he will reach beyond time and space and float unburdened through the infinite sea. The doctor appears to be a shaman of great ability. We summon and he builds a triangle in which the thumb will call the demon. The thumb steps into the triangle and is immediately possessed by something dark and terrible. The dumping snow obscures the triangle and allows the now possessed man to escape. He runs without impediment like a giant horse across the snow ridge. In one moment, the thumb is large and on top of the Swiss doctor and devours him, ending him and entering him. I plunge my cane into the neck of the thumb, but I know it is really the demon and vanquish them both. I stand alone atop Kanchen Junga. I am free. I am the tallest man in the world. I begin to float. But the demon seeks a new host and enters me as the thumb used to, and I glide, wailing like a ferocious banshee, down the slopes of the mountain, and I plummet underneath an embankment into a cave where I wrestle with the demon. I recount the thumb's lullabies and bury the demon into these pages, so that only the thumb can know how to find it. The thumb rebirthed will battle and this time demolish the demon. The thumb will then be unshackled too and join me floating in the infinite sea. Need all the fees in the house to go to the basement where it's all safe in. Avoid all the trouble, that's outside. Rivers of blood like a red tide, no lie. Apocalypse here and now today. Do you have anything that you want to say? You gotta sit there in the dark, afraid, cause you know it's your turn to be the mark. As much as you try, it ain't too much you can do. Except maybe suicide like a dude. It makes you pretty sad, really. Think about all the killers who've been around, had good feelings. The fire's not over yet. Protect yourself and never ever pull a jump, you might regret. We're on our way to judgment day, and whether you're like it or not, the right the God is here to stay. And out of the corner of my eyes, I saw two guys come in. One with a black hoodie, and one with a white hoodie. One with a black hoodie, and one with a white hoodie. And he comes right to me and he goes, get down now. And I just dropped to my knees and I heard, boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, oh my God. One with a black hoodie, one with a white
when the birds are chirping or even when it's for me, it's just for you. Fuck out of here, man.
Claudia, Claudia, Claudia.